All right, you guys ready to get started? All right, let's meet our first presenter tonight. It is Robert Johnson from Bukal Beverage. Robert Johnson spent his eighth grade year in the Ukraine where his parents worked as humanitarians. He also spent three years during his 20s in the Philippines and Thailand where he experienced the negative impacts of poverty and improper sanitation and how both relate to inadequate living conditions and health. He's the author of three books, a Business Weekly 40 Under 40 recipient and a founder of Bukal Beverage Company in Crossroads, Kombucha. Perfect. Kombucha? Perfect. Very close. <laughs> Bukal Beverages is a sparkling water company that will have different flavors inspired by river regions around the globe. A portion of each bottle sale will go back into water projects from where the company drew their flavor inspiration. Will you please welcome Robert Johnson. <laughs> Okay. Presenters, you can sit or stand. You can take that mic off of the stand if you like. That mic is yours. Robert, you're up. Wow, well, he, he did all the work for me, so. <laughs> New Year's Eve 2004, uh, I was lying in bed, clutching my stomach, worst pain of my life. I literally thought I was dying because earlier that evening, I actually drank unclean water on accident. And to add to my terror, I had no cell phone to call for help. I couldn't even reach for a, a pen or a paper to say goodbye to the people I love. And to add to all of that, outside my window, there's a, a crowd of people screaming and setting off fireworks and coconuts falling on my roof and bouncing on the cars and setting off their alarms. And it was like a war zone as I'm dying with coconuts falling and and um, yeah that was the best vacation of my life <laughs> it was the best that's true because I met my wife and my wife was born in the Philippines grew up there and my wife Yvonne and she grew up with no running water in her house much less clean water and clean water to her for the majority of her life was a luxury and in fact, one out of every nine people on earth, as I talk to you, has no access to clean water today. So in April, we founded Bukal, or we launched Bukal Beverage Company. It's our second beverage brand in Fort Wayne in three and a half years. And Bukal, which is the Filipino word for stream, spring, source, bubbles, um, it's a collection of exotic flavored sparkling water. Now, the idea came about when my wife was in the Philippines last year, standing alongside the river, and she looked up and noticed all these exotic fruits and thought, huh, why can't we bring those and put them in a bottle? And that's what we did. So if you've seen our bottles around town, you'll notice that we name each of our three flavors after three rivers in Asia, the Indus, Mekong, Yangtze rivers. Now, we do that as a tribute to Fort Wayne, being the city of three rivers. And all of that's really cool in itself. It makes for a really good story, but that's really nothing without the cause that drives it all. And that goes back to that, my wife's childhood with no clean water. And that night I thought I was dying in the Philippines. That, that inability of some people to have clean water, which is a very real um, problem today. So in every, uh, every bottle purchase, we actually donate a portion to a partner we have in Singapore called Water Roam. Now what they do is they have boots on the ground in Singapore and they install our, our, their proprietary well infiltration systems on our behalf. Now on top of that, um, they actually put our name on every well. Now that does two crucial things for us. One, it shows those rural communities uh, along those river regions that our flavors are named after shows them who paid for that well plus that we care about them. It also gives our uh, customers who buy each bottle ownership into that mission that we have so they can see for a fact this is this is what my purchase did. Now everybody says they want to change the world. Well this is a very easy way to change the world by twisting a bottle cap and drinking a bottle of water. With that twist of a cap, we can 
literally change the world, one bottle, one well, at a time. Wow, I nailed my time. <laughs> totally nailed it. Thank Robert for his four minutes. So this is how this works. I'm going to hand my mic to Stephanie. You will raise your hand if you have a question or a comment for Robert on his idea that he's just shared with us. And Stephanie will come to you. Please wait for the mic so that we can all hear your questions. And we've got four minutes for questions. Where is Stephanie running to first? Who's got the first question? He's going to kick us off here. Back to the room. Next question in the back of the room there. I hope you pardon me for being skeptical, but uh, when you uh, deal with a company in Singapore, uh, what proof do you have that they're actually doing what uh, they claim they're doing, actually putting the name on the well? Ah, great question. Uh, that's Part of the reason we worked with them is they're a smaller company. Uh, I talk to them almost every week, um, and I can actually see, they take pictures, they take video. So last week, um, you know, I could, they took video and they show the actual work being done and they show the logo. You know, you can see this is Cambodia. And um, being, you know, working with a big organization, that's very hard because they filter your money where they want it to go. The good thing with Water Room is we decide even which village and which region gets that funding. And we see it. And then we post it online. So. Um, when a well is established, how many people get to use that? And how long and then, like, how often are wells established? Great. They are as, as soon as the money comes in. So right now they're on a Cambodia campaign. And so, um, whenever we send the money. So basically a pallet of bottles pays for a well and the filtration system to be built in a community. Usually they're smaller, you know, 2,000 2, people. These are rural communities. So the whole community gets to use it. And then they, if they need repair, they take care of that as well. How long has the company been running? Uh, three months, we just hit three months. Still a baby. <laughs> yeah, I have a question as well. Great, great. So you talk about contributions made by each sale going to fund some of these wells, some of these projects. Do you make it public by how much percentage of these sales actually go to these projects? I have not yet. Um, I can tell you 20% of our bottle cost, the cost of each bottle that we have, is that charity part. Got a question up here in the front, and we'll have about a minute here. How many wells do you think will be put in by the end of the year, or potentially? That, that's why we're here, because the more word of mouth we get, the more people are buying. And this platform, to me, is a success. Already, I'm already successful because um, this gets our message out. Now I will say by the, by December we're on, we're looking to do 20,000 bottles per month. 20,000 bottles per month. That's a ton of wells by the end of December. Um, and we'll, we'll keep our social media up to date as those wells are built. Every well we're going to post pictures of so you can all see it. Last question. Keep track. You, you had mentioned Unfortunately, we are out of time. I saw one more hand, but we are out of time. Can we thank Robert one more time? Thank you. Thank you Our second presenter tonight is Francis Brooks with a rest that works. Francis is the executive director of Run Hard Rest Well. 
where she advocates against the 24-7 work culture and educates those in our community about why rest is a vital part of our lives. A 2015 graduate of Indiana Wesleyan University, she holds a BA in Journalism and a Master of Arts in Organizational Leadership from Huntington University. In 2018, she became a certified fundraising executive. She serves on the Leadership Council for Avalon Missionary Church, is Governance Chair of the Association of Fundraising Professionals Northeast Indiana Board serves the community as vice chair for Get On Board Allen County and volunteers with Art This Way. She and her husband have two daughters in high school and are proud to call Fort Wayne home. A Rest That Works is a program that offers seminars and retreats for leaders and teams exploring multifaceted wellness. They address rest and rejuvenation through four methods, rest, sleep, stillness, which includes meditation or prayer, and solitude. Will you please welcome Francis Brooks. Thank you, Curtis, and the committee. Uh, it's an honor to be here this evening. Five years ago, I'm walking out of Target. I'm sure many of you can imagine my hands are more full than I planned when I went in. And my phone rings. In 2015, we still answered our phones when they rang. They weren't always on silent. On the other end of the line is a friend. My oldest daughter and her son had gone to an event that evening and she had some things to tell me about. She was, let's say, frustrated. <laughs> By the end of that call, I was frustrated, and I'm probably frustrating my daughter who's sitting in the crowd tonight by telling the story. I was on my second city uh, for the second week in a row. I was uh, doing work for a great nonprofit here in town and privileged to be working with at-risk families and youth. And that phone call, was my last straw. I had not only um, no idea what my daughter had taken to that youth event, I wouldn't see her for three more days. And there are a lot of you in the crowd that I know ran in from other things today. And I'm so glad you're here. But I want to tell you that your journey of keeping the ball always going and trying to stay on top is not, you're not alone. A rest that works uh, and run hard, rest well, educate and advocate on the vital importance of rest. And as a society, honestly, you guys, we've forgotten it. I I'm standing here telling you the truth. Burnout, statistically, 57% of us who go on vacation check our email while on vacation. The World Health Organization in, earlier this year made burnout an actual medical condition. That means your exhaustion, your frustration, and likely your depression are something a medical doctor needs to see you for. We can change that. Run Hard, Rest Well presents seminars and retreats locally. We have three scheduled in the fall this year. Um, and we invite you to join us. Um, your contributions from this evening's event, for every $39 we raise, we'll be able to give financial assistance to someone who, like me, in that Target parking lot decided it's not worth it anymore can't keep all these balls in the air. So as people sign up for our retreats, they can either come and pay the full rate, or they can ask for financial assistance and come at no cost based on the contributions you're making tonight. We are a nonprofit. We rely on the generosity of the, you, the donor in this room. Um, we have great partners. Um, and we'll be about, we'll be celebrating our fifth year anniversary in December. So as we look across the crowd tonight, I have to tell you, I've sat there. I know what you're feeling. Um, when I got in my car at Target, I made a decision that I'm hoping to save you from making. My husband and I talked, and I said, man, this is hard. I'm not gonna be home, I don't even know what happened. And he said, yeah, and I didn't plan to raise our 11 and 13 year old daughters alone. And so I quit my job. It was good. I loved it. But you guys, we don't have to quit. We can stop. We can rest. People in this community can help you change the journey you're on so that you, too, can live your life with vitality, strength, and joy. Thank you for your vote tonight. Thank you, Francis. Say the drill. Raise your hand. Stephanie's going to get a mic to you, and Francis will answer. Questions from Amber. I don't know if I'm allowed to ask questions. I thought that too. <laughs> We're going to 
going to make an exception. This okay. seems against the rules. Um, right. Can you tell us what to expect if we were to attend a seminar? Absolutely. Thank you. So um, typically in our most popular seminar is a, a half day retreat. Um, as we move into late 2019 and early 2020, we are moving that to three hours. And our founder, Brenda Jank, is sitting here tonight, and I have begged for our steel. I said the workplace needs this to fit in less than a half a day. What you will come and experience is the first hour's education. So we talk about the things that you right now can leave knowing more. It's sleep, it's solitude, it's taking a day with your family and friends, we call Sabbath, and it's stillness. What are you doing to reconnect on a daily basis? Then you get to practice it in most situations. You sit around a table with other people and talk about how the fact that you're not alone on your journey. And then we have you do some accountability towards the end, and I don't want to give away any secrets because I want you all to sign up. <laughs> Thank you. Back to the room. Okay, how many people do you have working with you, and what is their education and qualification? this regard. So our founder, Brenda Jake, would you put your hand up, Brenda, um, is a Bachelor of Arts. She's been working in this material. Um, she would tell you since she graduated from college and burned out herself. Um, that was just wink wink a couple years ago. Uh, formally, she started presenting the material in 2008 and in 2014 we became a nonprofit. We, I'm privileged to be the first executive director working alongside her and I, I do have an advanced degree we have two additional facilitators besides Brenda, and that is a PhD um, out of Indiana Wesleyan University. His name is Dr. Nate Lowe. And um, we have a new presenter coming on more uh, towards the end of the year who I believe also has their bachelor's degree. I'm sorry? Uh, just follow along, PhD and Nate is in educational leadership and development, and uh, Chris, uh, Brenda's in Christian development, and I don't, honestly, I don't have our new person's staff. Sorry, I can get it to you though. Another question. Oh, I wanted to know where are these sessions held? Like, oh, thanks, that's easy. Okay, so here in town in the fall, <laughs> that's a easy question. September, we're doing one at Camp Luther Haven. It's a Sunday afternoon. Um, that's a faith based retreat. Um, and then in October, the 2nd, and the 22nd, and November 15th, we're doing them at Sweetwater, at the Community Grief Center, at Visiting Nurse, and the Downtown Library. Um, registration is $69, and your contributions tonight will help us make that available for people who can't afford the fee. I wanted to, first off, thank you for being so vulnerable with us tonight. Yeah. I almost shed a tear for you. <laughs> That is 100% what we're doing. Um, so it took me two years to learn what self-care looks like. I would tell you I'm still learning. I think it's a constant commitment. You choose every day what you do. Um, and it's having great people around you. So in my last 20 seconds, I would tell you we absolutely are focused on prevention. Um, we are uh, currently providing education to nonprofits, businesses, individuals. We'd love to help you at your church, your business. Curtis Smith might have been to one of our sessions. <laughs> what? Um, I don't know that he has. Have you? I don't think I have. Actually. He has. <laughs> but they're generous donors. So thank you. Uh, unfortunately, I do think we're out of time. Uh, so that was the last 20 seconds. Sorry. We'll talk later. I'll be here. Use that post note. We thank Francis. <laughs> Stick to the form board uh, rule for fairness. If you have anything for Francis, you can certainly talk to her uh, in person later on during one of our breaks. And then you have the uh, back wall with the post notes as well. Our third presenter tonight is Paula Booth with Monarchs and Milkweed, Concordia Lutheran High School here in Fort Wayne. Paula Booth is a Spanish language and culture teacher at Concordia Lutheran High School. She is married and has two children. She's a member of St. Augustine Lutheran Church and oversees the Spanish Exchange Program at Concordia, as well as the Spanish Club and the Monarch Butterfly Sanctuary Project. Previously, she sat on the board at the Fort Wayne Museum of Art for their 
Dia de los Muertos event? Really? I feel like the whitest person on the planet. So, my Spanish is off, sorry. She received the Excellence in Service Award this year from Concordia to counter the rapid decline of the species. Concordia is now converting 2,000 square feet of outdoor campus space into a monarch butterfly sanctuary. The garden will hold educational tours to schools and the public. Will you please welcome Paula Booth. Good evening, and I sincerely thank you for being here. Tonight, I'd like to talk to you about monarchs and to ask you to financially support our Monarch Butterfly Sanctuary on the outdoor campus at Concordia High School. Let me tell you why this is so important and so urgent. Monarch butterflies are remarkable. They're the only species other than birds that have a two-way migration. Their migration, which is the longest of any animal, uh, spans over 4,000 miles, three countries, and four generations. This intergenerational migration is incredible because Somehow their mysterious internal GPS guides them over vast distances from Canada to Mexico and back within a year, and they find where they need to go, and nobody really knows how. However, there has been a massive 97% decline in monarch butterfly population in the last two decades. Today the western population is nearly extinct, with only 3% of its population still remaining. If this catastrophic trend remains, within 20 years, experts say the monarch butterfly will be extinct. So, do we want to have monarch butterflies, which migrate right through Fort Wayne, Indiana, continue to migrate through? If we do, it's up to us, and the time is now. So why this steep decline? Migration is getting harder. Although when we look up, butterflies seem to be peacefully fluttering around, the truth is a little different because of climate change, landscape change, loss of habitat, and other factors, their journey is becoming fraught with difficulty. The greatest challenge to the monarch butterfly is the depletion of milkweed. This is a plant that serves as their food, their breeding ground, and their habitat. It grows throughout their migratory path, but it's disappearing. This has proven disastrous for the traveling butterflies, who eat the milkweed as caterpillars, take shelter on it, and lay their eggs on it. This natural phenomenon of migratory uh, monarch migration is too often undervalued. They are an important part of our North American ecosystem, and they, along with the loss of the American uh, honeybee colonies, could spell disaster for our biosphere. But there are things that you can do to help. One of the most important is to grow milkweed. Milkweed is a necessity for butterflies. Planting or allowing milkweed to grow in your backyard, in empty lots, schools, churches, um, along road sizes it's a, would have a major role in improving their survival rates and in saving the iconic monarch from extinction. Research encourages the construction of monarch way stations, which are simply a clump of monarch and nectar plants it only needs to be at about 100 square feet. Monarchs, uh, along with other pollinators, really only need small uh, patches of habitat to survive. And they can be grown anywhere, in backyard gardens, schools, along roadsides, and this will help the monarchs along their journey. It's estimated that in order to save the monarch, uh, we need 1.8 billion more monarch plants. And cities like ours, can replace about 30% of those. People need nature, we know that. But nature needs people, people like you, who will create these spaces. And Concordia Lutheran High School is going to do just that. We are going to take every dollar you give tonight and directly use it to buy milkweed and plant it in our 2,000 square foot garden. And we're going to buy it local geotypes from local nurseries the plugs will be planted in September, and the monarchs will be there in the spring. Monarchs are being threatened, but we can save them. It takes you and a whole lot of milkweed. Thank you, Paula. Creepy is just a side benefit. It's just a side benefit. It's for 
that would be two. All right, I'm going to hand the microphone to Casey now, and we're going to have four minutes for Q&A. It looks like we're going to start, you got a hole right up the spine of the room. We're going to start at the back and maybe work our way forward. So here we go. First question. My son is very excited about this topic. Great. I think you did a great job, Paula. Thank you. Um, I have several questions, also maybe suggestions. Yeah. So you talked about some of the required space in place in these building weeds. Uh, have you looked at any filtration scripts or anything like that that agriculture has to use you know, prior to actually accessing the waterway? Could some of those, which you know, In addition, there are some of the wildlife reserves in the state of Indiana that are kind of growing in interest, whether those be for, you know, industrial or some sort of wildlife, say, like birds, for instance. Mm -hmm. Could you also advertise this as milkweeds could be used as a food source for other animals as well or other creatures that would want to make other people want to plant these on their facilities? Yeah, absolutely. So that's, that's the second part of our project. We, uh, our garden will be open to the public. We hope people will come and observe us as we do this project and that there will therefore replicate our project in these 100 square foot areas or huge vast areas. We will um, collect our milkweed seeds and seedlings and offer them to people. And so our hope is that, that our garden at Concordia is just the beginning and that absolutely we want to be instrumental in spreading this as far and wide as we can. Next question. Um, when, is there any other way to help monarchs? There are so many ways to help monarchs, and I would love to talk to you about that for about an hour and a half. <laughs> <laughs> are you working with any agencies on this project? We sure are. So we are already partnering, partnering with the Botanical Conservatory here in Fort Wayne. Um, Fox Island Sanctuary Native Landscape is um, going to provide our plugs. Um, it's a native uh, plant company here in Fort Wayne. We're working with the National Butterfly Center, the only one in the country in uh, Mission, Texas, is partnering with us to design our garden. Uh, we're working with the Monarch Ultra, which is a foot race that traces the path of the migratory butterfly. We're working to show a uh, documentary called Ay Mariposa. Um, we're going to try to do that in September. Uh, we have members of our community. We're trying, in, very intentional about being inclusive in terms of um, multi-generational, multicultural. Um, yes. <laughs> Are monarchs endangered in coming? I'm sorry. Are monarchs um, endangered in coming? Okay, so they certainly are. Uh, in fact, the National Fish and Wildlife Association will make a decision this year whether they will be officially registered as a protected species in uh, in the endangered species list. So we have to act now. It's very urgent. Just under a minute, maybe time for one or two more. Where did Casey go? Can you tell us more about where you'll get the plants for your uh, garden? I sure can. So we, um, all of, we are committed to buying our plants from local uh, nurseries who will supply us with local geotypes and native plants that are native to Indiana. Uh, we are working specifically with Sean Nolan, who has opened his own business. He is a Fort Wayne native. He is a small business entrepreneur, and he um, is partnering very closely with us. He's a huge resource. He's giving us the milkweed at a 75% discount. We will be able to use every dollar you give us. It will stretch so much farther because um, we're getting them at 75% of a wholesale cost for the plugs. Will you thank Paula one more time? I feel bad cutting off when we have so many questions still out there. Again, you can connect with Paula in person or leave a note on the back wall. Time to meet our final presenter tonight, Olivia Walpole with Stronger Together. Olivia is a 15-year-old high school student. She is on the honor roll as a member of the National Junior Honor Society. She volunteers throughout the year with organizations such as the Fort Wayne Children's Hope House. Stronger Together is a community program that encourages Fort Wayne citizens to perform small acts of kindness, simple acts of kindness, such as paying for someone's food in the drive-thru or holding the door open for someone can be initiated through networking mixers and pay it forward action cards. We please welcome Olivia Walpole. Um, my organization
organization is called Stronger Together. It's kind of a hybrid of an organization where we'll bring our community together, but also give back to our community at the same time. I'm gonna talk about my experience and why I decided to come up with my idea of Stronger Together. When I was in seventh grade, a girl I knew was bullied and I was also a bully to her. I was a bystander as well. 85% of bystanders do not intervene. 4% of adults will intervene, while 11% of peers will intervene. My goal is to expand mindset of those who may not understand what it's like to be bullied or be abused or just not fit in with others. To reach out, I have a social media and right now I only have an Instagram. I have a Gmail as well and that will spread the word of my organization to all throughout Fort Wayne. Meetings will be monthly and I hope that as long as as long as we are having our organization meetings, we will continue to grow. What we'll do at meetings is talk about what has been bothering us throughout the month, what has been on our minds, things that have happened recently in our lives, and we'll also talk about how we used our Pay It Forward coin, which I'll talk about in a minute. We'll also, at the end of our meetings, have a event where we'll come together as a community, play games together, or we'll go out and volunteer in our community, and those will rotate monthly. Now, let's talk about money. <laughs> First is where we'll be meeting. Meet monthly meetings can cost from $40 to $100, depending on the size and where we decide to go. Those are reoccurring prices. T-shirts given to our Members of our organization can cost from $150 to $200. This can be a one-time big purchase, but can also be reoccurring. To give back to our community, it can cost up to $100 or more. And group activities can depend on the amount of people who attend or just what we decide to do. And lastly, our Pay It Forward coins. Pay It Forward coins are a way of doing a kind action for someone who is in need in your community and giving them a coin, hoping that they will spread the word and um, <laughs> spread that kind action, causing a ripple effect in your community. Thank you. All right, you know the drill by this point. We've got four minutes for Q&A. Casey's going to run around and get a mic to you. Who's got the first question? Right in the middle of the room. and they'll be passed on from there. Are you hoping for your organization to get um, bigger as years go by? Yes, I do hope that kind actions and they all spread and the organization grows. I think that your vision of what you're trying to accomplish is beautiful, by the way. So Thank you. Do you have any examples of what some of these fail forwards or what some of these objectives might be? Um, just seeing someone who's having a bad day, not having anyone to talk to, going up to them, asking them how they are, or paying for someone's food, anything can cause that effect. When we're doing these acts of benevolence, um, if we're going to spread awareness, Yeah, I'll have hashtags and all social medias on it so everyone will know how to contact us and how to find out when we meet and everything about our organization. Other questions? <coughs> Other questions? 
questions for Olivia? Got another one over here? Yeah, meetings are open to everyone, no matter your background, no matter your age, any, and everyone's welcome. They're all public. How can people get involved that maybe can't come to meetings, people that are not around or who doesn't work with their schedule? How can they get involved? They can reach out to me on social media, and we can just figure out ways where it would work for them to come to meetings, and I'm very flexible with everything that will happen. Other questions? We've got about a minute left. If anyone has a question for Olivia. Oh, right back here. Same kid. Yes. Um, buns are, will be very great to help <laughs> our organization grow. <laughs> but I also do have marketing and a group together where we can proceed even without funds. Time for one more, one last question. Oh, right, you gotta run a lot, Casey. Back of the room. <laughs> so, um, what is your biggest accomplishment? Sorry? What is your biggest accomplishment? My biggest accomplishment, like with this organization, <laughs> um, just assembling a team of teens, people my age, who are willing to help with anything that happens with this group. All right, thank you. Can we thank Olivia one more time? <laughs> Funds will be very great. Sure, our winner tonight will agree, whoever that is. All right, we are going to break for dinner. Uh, I'll bet you can guess, even though we have a lot of first timers here, I'll bet you can guess what we're having for dinner. The name of tonight is Four Wing Soup, so you should be able to figure that out. Here is the deal during dinner. A couple of things that are very important. This is a great chance to fill out the survey, let us know what you think of soup, and leave that on your table. This is a great chance to leave post-it notes in any of those boxes. Also, during dinner, we're gonna hear from a couple of our past winners and get updates on what they've done since winning suit. And we have a special guest from another suit that's going to give us a quick update as well. So while you're in line, while you're eating, while you're chatting with uh, friends at your table, uh, certainly be paying attention because it's a great chance to catch up with what all has been happening. And here's the most important thing during dinner. Here's how you vote. When you came in, you were given a ballot. There are four vessels on the foot of the stage here. You can vote in any of them. They do not coordinate with any individual presenter. So we could have every vote in this one, or we could have every vote in this one, or they could be all completely spread out. It does not matter which one you put it in. Just fold it up. Put it in, after dinner we're gonna count the votes and we will hand out a lot of money at the end of soup. So, soup is right over here and uh, let's thank the Fort Wayne Country Club for providing uh, our soup tonight. And we thank Chef Jamie for producing the salad tonight as well. So at this time, you are welcome to get in line for dinner, but again, please vote, fill out the survey, post notes, all of that, and during dinner, we'll have the past presenter starting here in just a moment. All right, everyone, if I could have your attention, all of the votes are in, and they have been counted, and we have a winner to announce tonight. Before we do that, a couple of reminders. While I have your attention, before we all start scurrying around, fill out your surveys, leave them on your table. Uh, we would really appreciate that feedback. 
Also, a lot of post-it notes already on the back wall. Thank you to everyone who has done that. If you have an idea, a uh, connection point, a question, uh, someone they should know about, anything like that, please leave it there. And there is the one for soup as well. If you have any thoughts, ideas for soup too, we would appreciate that. There is only one soup left in 2019. It is right here at the summit on September 19th. And the submission period is open now. So if you're here tonight and you have a great idea that you would like to submit to soup, you can do that. Maybe you know a friend or a neighbor or a family member who has a great idea that should be here at soup. Please pass that on. You can go to fortwaynesoup.org, fortwaynesoup.org to submit your idea and perhaps be one of the four finalists again for the last soup of the teens. We only have one soup left in the teens. It's 2020 in five months. That's crazy. So tell your friends about soup and please join us on September 19th. We'd love to have you uh, here. Also, when we are done, if you could help us by cleaning up your dinner uh, area and your table, we would really appreciate that as well. All right, you guys ready to find out who tonight's winner is? Tonight's winner is going to receive $1,100, $1,186 to be exact, okay? Nice. And tonight's winner, are we gonna do a drum roll? Have we been doing a drum roll? <laughs> Let's do a drum roll. Unlike the people that she is trying to help, she doesn't have to travel 4,000 miles to the stage. Tonight's winner is Paula Booth with Monarchs and Milkweed. Paula, come on up. September 19th. 
19, final soup of the year, final soup of the teens. If you have someone that you know in your life, if it's you that has a great idea, please share it with us. This is the kind of thing that makes Fort Wayne better. It makes our community better when we all come together and support these kinds of organizations. Can we real quick thank Amber and Mark and Aaron and Andrew and all of those.